And in this review, I'm looking at an amplifier priced sub £1,000, in fact, 749 to be exact. And if you've taken a gander at the thumbnail for this video, you will know I'm referring to the Cambridge CXA61 integrated amplifier running at 60 watts. This is a class AB design. Now, buying integrated amplifiers under £1,000 can be a tricky business because these days there's a wealth of choice out there with many brands offering their wares at similar price points, especially when you enter that busy £500 to £1,000 sector. The issue of price is an intriguing one because the CXA61 succeeds an earlier incarnation called the CXA60. I bet there was beer and sandwiches all night around the table thinking of that new name. And when that was released, the CXA60, that was priced at 599. And this is around four or five years ago or so. And you can still pick up that model for around £300 secondhand off eBay, depending on condition, of course. The fact that this latest 61 model hits a higher than expected, well, I didn't expect it, £749, adds a few ripples. It triggers one or two shimmers in the force, you might say. In terms of the price point, the difference in price and features between the 61 and the 60, and how the CXA61 might compete in the sub £1,000 sector, needs a little bit more investigation. At £749, the CXA61 has, it must be said, a tougher job at establishing a niche for itself. So what have we got here? How does the CXA61 compare to the older model, the CXA60? And what features does the CXA61 offer for a new buyer? Well, let's have a closer look, shall we? And we will find out. And welcome to the closer look section of this review. And let's look at the physical size of the CXA61 first, which spans a healthy 115 by 430 by 341 millimeters, while the CXA60 is actually the same size. It's also the same weight, which I found intriguing indeed. As is the Cambridge way, there are two sets of speaker outputs. There's the first, and there is the second. Just to the right of that, we have a preamp output just there, and just to the left, there's also a subwoofer output too. There's an output on the front, of course, and that is the 3.5mm headphone socket. I'll detail the techie specs of the DAC in a second, but in terms of sockets, there's a coax just here. Just to the right, we have a couple of optical ports, and they're hidden by these little covers here, as you can see. Let me put that back, just keep things tidy. You can also see a USB port, ideal to connect laptops and the like. The older CXA60 demanded that you add a Bluetooth dongle to get that going, but Bluetooth is included here, and there is the aerial. And it's a stubby little thing. Let me just see if I can find the screw thread on this. And while I do that, and screw this little aerial in, I also have to add that the CXA61 loses the tone controls. And more than that, the balance control has also been removed from the earlier 60 incarnation. An ESS Sabre ES9010K2M replaces the older Wilson chip. In terms of resolution, that means the optical handles 32-bit 96, coax handles 32-bit 192, and USB shifts 32-bit 384 in PCM, DSD256, and DOP256. Bluetooth handles apt HD, 24-bit, 48K. There are one or two home automation features on the back of the CXA61, including the serial port here, with a few trigger sockets just to the right there as well. Don't bother searching for a built-in phono amp. There isn't one. There wasn't one with the CXA60 either. And I'm okay with that, actually, because an external model is far superior and less noisy than an internal model. You'll also find four sets of RCAs for this 
60 watt class AB amplifier design. The fact that Cambridge sees fit to refer to the front mounted 3.5mm auxiliary port as a MP3 port is, I have to say, a little odd. Nowadays it's a socket labelled tag that seems to emanate from times gone by and not in a cuddly vintage way either. Outmoded, you might say. On the subject of externally fitted source options, if you're going to keep this auxiliary port in place at all, then why not add a USB socket for thumb drives while you're at it? The only issue I really had with the active basic design features was the lack of a proper readout window. Yes, there's illuminated feedback in terms of what source you've selected, which I like and appreciate, but there's no volume feedback. You don't know what gain you've just set in numeric terms. There's nothing. You just have to keep a note on the volume dial position for that. What am I expected to do here if I lose my place, as it were, and want to find my previous gain position? Mark it with a piece of blue tack? I feel leaving this information out was a mistake and reduces the 61's ease of use. An included TV-like remote is aimed at, well, numerous Cambridge products. It therefore features redundant buttons, so is overly busy in design terms. But it's reasonably well laid out and not too difficult to use. On the rear is the battery compartment and within you'll find a trio of AAA batteries. Gotta say I dislike the front mounted 3.5mm headphone sockets because if I want to use a high quality set of headphones like the reference Sennheiser 660S's used in this review then I'll have to add a 6.35mm to 3.5mm socket adapter, a converter. Adding the latter will immediately reduce sound quality. Just doing that alone hampers sonics. I would have preferred to have seen a full size 6.35mm socket from Cambridge, especially at this price point. Oh, and the headphone socket automatically mutes the speakers when applied. But what do I think of the overall sound quality from the Cambridge CXA61 integrated amplifier? Well, let's do some sound tests and we will find out. And welcome back to the sound quality tests. And first up, I decided to test vinyl on this amplifier. And I've got a bit of a thing about Katie at the moment, Katie Malua and her new album, album number eight. It's quite a nice testing tool for new hardware. So I thought, ah, for old time's sake, give Katie another spin. Now I wasn't able to grab an older CXA60 in time for this comparison review. Although colleagues have said to me that the 61 offers improved clarity over the earlier model. I'll leave you to muse upon that because I can't confirm that assertion. What I can do though, is look at the CXA61 in a more modern context. And that detail is here in abundance, and it's based on the CXA61's wholly neutral demeanor. This amplifier sits right in the center of the tonal ladder. There are no extremes. This amplifier never goes out on a limb. It never pushes the envelope to find itself stranded. You never feel that it loses control in any way. So frequency discipline was absolute. There was no treble pinching. There was no mid-range smearing. There was absolutely no bloom or boom in the bass. The sense of focus from the CXA61 was immense, and that was aided by the low noise presentation of the music something that did surprise me considering the wealth of features on offer from the 61 and the possible noise that could have emanated from each of those. This low noise neutral approach and the focus basically form the heart of the personality of the CA61. That is, these three pointers formed the core of this amplifier design. Everything else flew from this presentational center. So what I mean by that is, whatever the CXA61 did in music terms, wherever it went, it would then come back as soon as possible to that neutral center, to that starting point. It would never roam too far from that middle bit. So if you look, for example, at the CXA61's principal competitor, well, for my direction at any rate, 
that being the Audio Lab 6000A, priced at around £150 less and an outstanding design under £1000, the Audio Lab Amplifier is neutral, but a little less neutral than the CXA61. The 6000A offers a low noise presentation, but not quite to the same degree as the CXA61. The 61 lowered that noise floor a little more. Yet the 6000A gives that ground to enable it to strive and reach out further in dynamic terms. It wants to push the frequencies further. It wants to please you. It takes chances. For the CXA61, when percussion was hit, when vocals emerged or the string section skimmed across the soundstage, the centre was sought out by each and every instrument, keeping the musical experience firmly in place. So imagine a dog on a leash, a long leash. The leash allows the dog only to roam so far, and eventually that dog will once again return back to its kennel, such as the CXA61. Now, you might think that analogy might sound overly restrictive, but I would disagree. This amplifier is not a high-end device. It was built on a budget, let's not forget. Cambridge obviously wanted to perform well all of the time. Not some of the time, not only on certain pieces of music or particular genres, not only in quiet or loud periods, all of the time. Keeping a sonic control over the available frequencies allowed the CXA61 to work within its means to do just that. It allowed the Cambridge to maintain a valuable consistency. It means that you can rely on this amplifier. The principal source of the detail from the CXA61 was the lowering of the noise floor. In comparison, the 6000A, the noise floor on the 6000A was low, not quite as low, so the majority of the extra detail found from the 6000A was when the 6000A went hunting. It went searching for new detail. It was more exploratory. It kept looking for tasty morsels of detail. Not the 61 though. The 61 in comparison knew what it had, kept hold of what it had, and tried to make the best of what it had in its grasp. The Audio Lab amplifier also knew what it had, but then went hunting for a little bit more. Okay, it lost a bit of basic detail during that journey, but then gained more when it eventually hunted down that extra detail found on the outer limits. Hence, the two designs are contrasting in their sonic approach. The 61's focus needs explanation, I think. Now, a big part of the performance from the CXA61 is this amplifier's focus. That's one of the core values of the entire design. The 6000A from Audiolab was focused too, although maybe that was applied in a looser fashion. That meant there was more space in around the 6000A's soundstage, which meant that the Casey Maloa vocal sounded richer with more layers and gaps in between the double tracked vocals. The CXA61 though, scored through its precision, its flexibility, and its agility. To dig deeper, imagine a shapely Victorian lady putting on her corset. Got that? Okay. Now, the 6000A performance could be compared to that lady's natural hourglass figure without the corset. She hasn't got there yet. The CXA61 was a bit like the more precise form achieved once that corset has been added and those laces pulled tight. Now, anyone who knows their Victorian history will understand that many ladies in that situation found it harder to breathe and experienced a sort of shortage of air when the corset was worn in such a manner. Hence, beauty came at a price. And that's exactly how the CXA61 sounded. Very, very shapely, but short of breath. That is, it lacked an infusion of air and space. So when comparing the two, the CXA61 and, in my opinion, its principal competitor, the Audiolab 6000A, 
There are pros and cons for both. The 6000A offers a tremendous palette of detail that excites and wows because it also surprises, while the CXA61 tends not to surprise, but it gives you greater enhanced defined basic detail. It does play things a little safer and polishes up what it holds so it's less emotional and less exciting to hear. It's more predictable. The CXA61 was completely reliable in sonic terms, if slightly more conservative. That said, this box will not let you down. It will give you all the musical essentials you require and it will do that time and again. I then moved over to something slightly more dynamic and a slice of New Order and the track Regret from the album Republic. Now this release, or at least my copy, was pretty compressed and quite edgy in its presentation. The detail on offer from the CXA61 was tremendous, with the bass guitar sounding portentous and growly. Shy synth lines and ride cymbals were easily tracked by the ear, while the lead vocal was precise with top-notch diction. Because of that precision, a delivery that was exacting in its approach, the master here was pretty aggressive. To repeat, that aggression was not the CXA61's fault. The excessive peak limiting on this album is not pleasant, but because the CXA61 offered enhanced precision and doesn't provide a wealth of space, space in which compressed music can be diluted a tad to make it more approachable, the CXA61 was wholly dismissive and offered no truck for error. So that frequency discipline I mentioned earlier went one step further than other amplifiers in its price point. If you play music that is poorly produced on the CXA61, it will tell you all about it in great detail, folks. Ideal for hi-fi users who want the undiluted truth Sure, but the 61 never tries to correct or ameliorate that issue. So the 61 never says, ah, right, well, let me look at this problem. Let me try and improve the situation. And let me just make this music a little less nasty. Now, what the 61 does, it takes a rather strict uh, school mom approach. So basically it says, right, this music is nasty. This is what I have. This is what you're getting. Deal with it. Again, in many ways, this attitude is one that I find, in some respects, admirable, because it gives you the truth, even if the 61 doesn't aid matters in any way. Now, some of you might also like that truth, but possibly not quite so unvarnished. Hooking up my Audiolab 6000 CDT CD transport to the coax port on the 61 instead of an external DAC, I was again pleased to hear the high degree of information emanating from the soundstage. Precision and focus was retained as well, with shy secondary percussion easily found by the ear, and enough bass punch and weight to provide a foundation for the track as a whole. Now, the internally mounted DAC did offer more inherent noise and was understandably a step down in quality from my external DAC. The internal DAC did reduce mid-range insight, but that was to be expected. On the whole, the internal DAC performed very well indeed. That was later confirmed when I played a selection of Miles Davis jazz tracks via my Astell & Kern AK120 connected via the optical port. I was impressed with the clarity of the Davis trumpet, while percussion was not only sprightly in nature, but the precision helped the track to maintain a fast pace. I then started up the Bluetooth option on the CXA61 and fed it some lossy and lossless tracks from Marvin Gaye and dear old Kylie Minogue. I found that the lossy format itself triggered an edgy coolness around the mids, highlighting limitations in terms of dynamic reach and insight, but that was partly due to the inherent abilities of that file format, or lack of. Nevertheless, for the lossless file, the CXA61 managed to expand the soundstage and added a sense of grandeur to the playback while adding a rich complexity around an acoustic guitar, for example. Overall, Bluetooth here was, well, not outstanding or surprising, 
but definitely competent, efficient and usable with good sound quality. I then gave the internal headphone amplifier a quick test with a pair of Sennheiser 660S headphones and the performance from that was decent without being amazing. A lack of dynamic reach and rather veiled mids averaged the musical output out but did succeed in taming the compressive nature of that New Order track for example. So what do I think of the Cambridge CXA 61 integrated amplifier? Well it's an intriguing fascinating amplifier because it arrives with a dedicated set of characteristics. It has a distinct personality. One that will prove very popular amongst many hi-fi users. Its disciplined neutrality is a major selling point, especially when that's coupled with its tremendous focus. The low noise output is a boon in terms of detail retrieval, while the precision it demands from all music will give you an accurate rendition of your music collection. Combine those sonic elements with the CXA61's extensive feature set and Cambridge has got quite an amplifier on its hands here. So definitely worth checking out and definitely worth a demo if that can be arranged. For now though, I'm done. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. Thank you very much for your support. If you can, if you can do a quick like, that would be much appreciated. And if you haven't already done so, I would love to have your company in the future. So if you can click on the subscribe button below, that would be much appreciated. I will be back with another video next week. Hope to have your company then. Until that time, bye bye for now.